Aloha, I'm Terry Lilly, a marine biologist here in the Hawaiian Islands. I hope you enjoy my film. For over 40 years, I've studied sharks worldwide as a career marine biologist. So when I was invited to join the Great White Shark research team on the Nautilus ship to the Guadalupe Islands off of Mexico, I was extremely excited. I boarded the yacht out of Ensenada with underwater photographer and fellow shark researcher Pamela Whitman for the long 20-hour boat ride to this remote, pristine volcanic island 180 miles offshore of Baja, Mexico. What an amazing adventure and research trip we had. The main focus of this entire trip is to protect these great white sharks. And the Mexican government has a couple really good nonprofits and a lot of great biologists. On board in the evening, we got to talk about where the sharks lived on the island. Who else inhabits the island? It's a military base. There's also a small fishing community. We got to talk about the behavior of the sharks, the biology of the sharks, how they intermix and deal with acoustical monitoring, biological monitoring, and even how the sharks identify and relate to the boats in the water. We were joined by a crew of 10 world-class shark experts and 22 other shark enthusiasts from around the world. This island is so pristine, only a few boats go there a year, and it is a recognized Mexican marine sanctuary. The island is surrounded by deep cool water and is home to thousands of seals and over 250 known massive great white sharks. The day starts as a beautiful sun comes up on this remote island and the shark cages are lowered down into the water. These cages hold about three to four people per cage and then with a crane they're lowered down anywhere from about five feet deep to about 30 feet deep. The divers, including myself, had to put on very heavy weight belts because these shark cages are bouncing around and you need to be weighted so you kind of stick to the floor of the cage or you'll get bounced around so much that you can't observe the sharks or you can't take pictures of movies. So here's Pamela climbing into one of the shark cages and then you breathe underwater just like you would scuba diving through air tanks that are mounted within the cage. It's really quite a unique experience. I've been diving with sharks and big sharks my entire lifetime, but I've never been in a shark cage. So this is the first time for me. And, uh, and it was quite unique being in a cage when the sharks were out swimming free. The shark researchers from up above take big pieces of tuna and they throw the tuna out in the water to bait the sharks so the sharks will come close to the boat. Now they're not actually feeding the sharks. If you notice as soon as the sharks get near the bait, the researchers will pull the bait in because it's not a good idea to actively feed the sharks when we're there because that could alter their behavior. The idea is just to bring the sharks close to the cages so we can document their behavior and basically just live with them for four days straight. And uh, it's just really, really, truly an amazing event. So from underneath, when the bait's thrown out in the water and you're in the cage, we're shooting video and taking pictures of these monster great white sharks. Some of them are anywhere from 12 to 20 feet long. The big females pretty much rule the roost out there at Guadalupe Island. And when they come in to check out the bait, the smaller males tend to leave because one thing that we learned out at Guadalupe is these sharks will eat each other. The large sharks will eat the smaller sharks. And matter of fact, one of the ways that we do identification on these sharks so we know one shark from the other is by observing bite marks that are on the sharks. Bite marks from each other when they're feeding bite marks from a large female that may have bit a smaller male to try to eat them and also bite marks when the males breed with the females they bite the females on the side 
So all of these sharks are very, all of these bites are very distinguishable from underwater. And this is one way that we can actually identify each of these sharks to know where they came from and where they've been. One thing we know about these big sharks, they're very prehistoric. Some of them get 22, 23 feet long. They can live for well over a hundred years. And we also know that they almost never eat people. But occasionally when a human gets in the way of a feeding shark, then the human gets bit. They come right up to the cage. They look right into your eyes. You look right back into their eyes. They're so graceful and it is incredibly an exciting event to share with other shark lovers. One of the things that I love most about our shark research trip was being on board with some of the Mexican biologists that were there to study the great white sharks and manage them to make sure that the dive operations weren't harming any of the sharks or changing their behavior and also being underwater with all the other shark experts so we can study and document each individual shark that's there in Guadalupe Island. It's really cool. Over 250 of these sharks now have been documented by their fin structure, by the patterning of the white on their belly, by whether or not they're males and females. You can actually tell by their anal fins and they have these little modified fins called claspers. The males have larger claspers, the females are real small. And you can also identify these sharks by all the different scars that are on their bodies. They also share in a data bank these pictures of these sharks with shark researchers in Baja, Mexico, in the Fairlawn Islands all the way up in uh, California, and then also out in the Hawaiian Islands where I live. Some of these sharks now with the tags have been found in all of those places and we're starting to understand a little bit more about their migrations. They document the concentration of the sharks along the island itself and all kinds of amazing behavior that we actually documented on this trip with HD video. They've also already done up a book of known sharks at Guadalupe Island so we could take our pictures and video and see if they match the ones that are already known here. When it was all time to leave, the crew had a lot of work to do because they have to raise up all of the shark cages. Uh, they have to put away all the gear. They have to get this boat in working order to make that 20 hour trip all the way back to Ensenada, Baja, Mexico. And so it's really a pretty amazing group of people that work on this ship. They're all highly concerned about the future of the great white sharks here in Mexico, and that's their main focus. We had a very long 20 hour boat ride all the way back to Ensenada, Baja, Mexico on the Nautilus research ship. We slept on the ship overnight. We arrived the next morning into Ensenada Harbor and ended our trip by getting off the boat and on to the Shark Express bus for our way back to La Jolla after spending an amazing five days out at sea at Guadalupe Island with the Great White Sharks. <laughs>